Welcome to Michigan Reimagined, a spotlight podcast. And here's your host, Chris Buck. All right, so on the heels of two robust reports surrounding the Michigan Avenue corridor through the Lansing region, the Tri-County Regional Planning Commission is seeking final input before redesigning this important conduit. Here to talk about the project is the Deputy Director of the Tri-County Regional Planning Commission, Nicole Balmer. Welcome back to the show, Nicole. Hi, Chris. Thanks so much for having me. My pleasure. My pleasure. So for those not familiar with Tri, I'll just call it Tri-County, um, what is your geographic uh, scope and what is your core mission? What do you guys do? The Tri-County Regional Planning Commission actually covers the Greater Lansing region, so Clinton, Eaton, and Ingham counties, um, as well as the urbanized areas, so some of the more dense population areas in the immediate vicinity of Lansing and East Lansing. Um, and essentially what we do is we track down federal funds for transportation improvements. Um, that's really our bread and butter, so public transit, fixing the roads, <laughs> um, you know, and take your pick when it comes to trails, non-motorized, and other mobility enhancements. But we also do a lot of work in economic development, so studies around housing, placemaking, um, and we also manage a lot of grant programs for water quality and other elements like that. Got it. And then you just bring that content to the world, and then people can use that as the guide to say, okay, there's a need, and I can go deploy resources to go, I mean, the roads and exactly. stuff. Exactly. It's yeah, all but, about building a strategic right, blueprint, so right. we're planning it in advance. You know, people who are like, oh, I want my road fixed, and it's like, actually, we might already have it planned out. We know that planning is kind of a necessary evil, but without it, we don't get the jobs done, we don't get the funding. Right. And you got to time stuff up, right? Oh, 100%. I mean, I, I, yeah, the, the, what, the CIP is a community. Uh, yep, know, the TIP, you, Transportation tr- Improvement Program. Right, all that Good stuff, job. right. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> so, and, and yeah, it's like you don't want to fix a bridge and then realize that the roads are going to need to or sewer. And yeah, that's a right. lot, why a lot of what we do is we look at all three community development, transportation, and um, environmental issues because regional boundaries are everywhere when we talk about right. municipalities. People don't care who owns the road, right? They just care it gets fixed. And so we try and kind of um, bridge the divide between different municipalities to coordinate whether it's sewer under the road, um, economic development projects along the road, and kind of put it all together and mash it up. So how do you figure out what the priorities are? How do you know your, like, so what's your, what's your method to getting kind of community input? The method input? to the madness. Yeah, right. Um, well, a few different components. Probably the most uh, primary and boring is that there are a ton of federal regulations that we know so you don't have to. Okay. You can sleep better at night <laughs> to check those boxes off. Um, so when those come into play, there are all these extra processes and plans and studies that you have to do to justify different projects and make them all line up and make sense with local communities. So um, my one of my favorite parts about it is you get to see all these local communities you know you've got clinton county and maybe you've got delta township you've got all these different organizations and communities come together and say hey you know i'll do this construction in 2024 if you'll sw- swap with me in 2022 so a lot of it is just putting it on paper and bringing them in the same room because otherwise they're not having those conversations right right you're right because when you go I guess most noticeably state to state, you yeah, can tell exactly. when you're crossing the state line because Precisely. the state of Ohio did their construction project older than the Michigan one. You hit Michigan and the roads are better, right? You know, or, or exactly. you, so you probably have that from the city of Lansing as it goes into Delta Township and then yep. you go to the Lots Skipney. of technical analysis, right, right. take the priorities from the locals and make it something regional. Got it. Okay. So we're here today to talk specifically about the work you've been doing on the Michigan Avenue corridor. And, and again, so that's... Um, there's been a lot of studies. If, if you're not a mid-Michigan resident listening to this program, can you just paint a little bit of a picture as to what, what, what we're talking about? Yep. So Michigan Avenue, what I now affectionately term it as Michigan's Avenue, um, is the main corridor between the capital, the state capital, to Michigan State University. And it's not as long as what people think, um, especially for the perception issues that we have with Michigan State students versus downtown workers and those who live there. Right. Um, and the reality is that it's a, it's a major mobility corridor, but it's also a huge economic development opportunity as far as being at the heart of our region. I mean, it's not only centrally located geographically, but it connects our two largest cities in our entire region. Um, So it's very strategically positioned. We've done a lot of studies, including by Tri-County in the past decade. Um, We've had different organizations like the Capital Area Transportation Authority that has done studies. And every single one had kind of a different angle. Mm -hmm. Um, It was never totally comprehensive or there was a specific goal to get in mind or specific sets of public feedback. Our goal with this study, and knock on wood, I wish this was wood right here, (laughs) final study, um, is to create a single vision. So while all these past studies came up with all these options, you know, engineers, people much smarter than you and I, um, not as smart as Brent Forsberg though, right? right? (laughs) Um, But the reality is that now we need a single shared vision that we all can agree to. And it's going to take a lot of compromise because if we really had it 
everything that we wanted from, you know, expanded sidewalks for outdoor dining to, you know, five lanes of traffic with a middle center, a center turn lane. Um, it would be like 12 lanes wide, realistically. Right. So yep. we can't have it all. Um, so for those that don't know, we, you know, have to work in between the curbs as well as the buildings. And right. now we just want that single vision for how that space is going to be used. So what's the process? I mean, it sounds oh, hard. I mean, yeah. and at some point you just need to pull the trigger, right? Mm -hmm. And so who pulls the trigger, right? I mean, yeah. so if you're the shepherds, right? You're, you're trying to get all the people in the room, get some sort of, it really almost approvals um, of that compromise, but then like who will do the work? Or, well, like, Chris, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> Um, so one of the things that people don't realize is that uh, the segment itself, all the way from the Capitol to Grand, um, going up to East Lansing, is actually owned by multiple asset owners. So you've got the city of East Lansing that owns a portion of the road. You know, first and foremost, it is an operation study because the road informs how we can use everything else. Right. Um, you can't, you know, add sidewalks if you have to have, you know, insert bike you know, bike lane or bus stop or extra lane for emergency vehicles. So the, the mobility side informs the economic development side. That's why it's an operation study at its core. Um, so when we talk about process and who pulls the trigger, um, the reality is that you've got those asset owners. So you've got CATA who owns bus stops along the corridor. You've got City of Lansing that owns a portion of the road. You also have MDOT, uh, Michigan Department of Transportation, that owns a portion of the road and is kind of that dividing factor um, right by the bridge there in the overpass. But they own, okay. They own a portion of the road, yes. Why? Um, <laughs> well, because it's, it's about right of way and where the overpass goes, the freeway. Okay. And these things can change. Um, ownership technically can change and things like that, but we're working with all these different jurisdictions. We kind of talked about those municipal boundaries and yeah, people yeah. don't care, right? We don't want people driving along the corridor and saying, yep, I know I just entered a new city, right? Right, uh, right. But on top of that, we've got Lansing Charter Township. Right. Um, and while they may not actually facilitate road development improvements, they do manage all the zoning and community development aspects of it. So you've got all these different asset owners, the literal asset owners, not necessarily community members, but the people that are responsible for fixing the roads that we already work with on a day to day <coughs> basis. That's what makes it such an amazing partnership, because we already have them in a room, like literally monthly to coordinate all of these projects. Um, the other side of that is the community. So when we talk about pulling the trigger and where does the money come from? Um, one of the reasons for the timeliness of the study is that we do have $5 million secured for road construction, literally in the next few years. Um, and we want to make sure that we don't do anything we can't undo because um, it's very right. hard to change infrastructure. We want to make sure it aligns with the overall vision, the vision. And is relevant 20 years from now. And Precisely. Kind of, right. yeah, and yeah. we know those priorities are going to change. Yep. But that's why we're doing this now. We just had a global pandemic and how many people would have you know, pushed as avidly for, say, outdoor seating or enhanced bus <clears throat> stops is what they did a few years ago. Right. So we don't want to recreate the wheel. Um, we are not doing as much public engagement as the past studies because we already have the feedback. Now we just want to confirm what we've heard. Um, so you'll, you'll see some of that, and I'm sure you'll have other questions about that. So when we talk about process, yes, we're taking in the public feedback. Yes, we're working with the engineers and the local jurisdictions. But ultimately, hopefully there's nothing too small for this study and this ultimate plan um, for Michigan Avenue. I don't care if it's cleanup day that we host once a month and it's a, a neighborhood organization that coordinates it. Maybe it's as big as $5 million in infrastructure improvements. Um, so when we talk about implementation and funding and how it's going to get done. It's, it's going to, it needs to be, I guess, a community investment, both literally and figuratively. Got it. And financially. Right. And fin yeah, yes, right, right. Exactly. Investment. So <clears throat> you're tapping a lot of the fed dollars, but I guess there's also probably state dollars and uh, like, it, it, cause M MDOT is funded by the state, right? Correct. Well, there, there's a very long answer to that. Yep. Um, everything kind of flows through. There's, there's state tax dollars that come through, but there's also federal. Um, the state actually does get some federal dollars as well, just like we filter through for our local communities. So the funding can come from many places. The hard part is it's a moving target because as administrations change, legislation changes, the funding sources change. Um, and sometimes it's, it's local funding, right? So um, I think the biggest goal is to have something on paper because as we kind of saw with the pandemic and the federal money, I, I didn't know that money fell from the sky, but apparently it does now, right? <laughs> um, and we weren't prepared. You know, you're hearing all these amazing stories about, you know, Corktown and how their Michigan Avenue is getting all these millions of dollars from the state because they came with a good plan. We don't have that on paper and we need that vision on paper. 
you know, personally for me, it's, it's, you know, if you look at, we'll get, I'm sure to the website in a little bit. Um, we're calling this the vision for Michigan's Avenue and that apostrophe S at the end of Michigan's is probably the most important thing for me Yeah, because we're not treating it like Michigan's Avenue. There are Michigan avenues all across the state. And for that matter, beyond there is one that connects the state capital where all of our lives are impacted every day, legislatively to global talent at Michigan state. And we're not treating it like that. So I think if we can get something on paper that we all can compromise and agree and work toward, we're going to be a lot better positioned to make magic happen that we haven't necessarily had um, in the past and go after funding that we aren't traditionally eligible for. Got it. And we talked about the two studies that have been done. And, and I think you've painted a nice picture that <clears throat> they were done by different people and they had a little bit of a different theme or a reason to be done. So one of the questions I had queued up that I think isn't as relevant before is like, didn't we already study this and aren't we ready to go kind of a thing? So you've explained that nicely, but let's talk about it then from a next steps type standpoint. Clearly, you're going to use those studies and the data that was that was brought from all of the energy that went into those two things because they're still very relevant. And then you got to put today's lens on it post knock on wood pandemic. <laughs> um, but so let's just jump into the website. So talk about the website because that, that, that's the beginnings of the, kind of the, the next steps, right? Yeah, where is to go. To get exactly. people involved. So talk about the website. What is the website and what people, what will people find it there? Absolutely. Um, so it's michigansavenue.com. Um, it's very straightforward, very public friendly, but it kind of explains everything that we're talking about, yep. the whys, um, the hows, and we're going to be updating it as we know more in the future. Um, the reality is we've been doing this study actually since late last year. Um, there's so much behind the scenes work that has been happening that people don't necessarily understand or know about. We do it so you don't have to. Right. It's my favorite theme. Um, <laughs> so that means like traffic counts. You know, we've been out there all summer conducting traffic counts to make sure that we know the actual demand of the corridor post pandemic, but also be able to look at it. OK, 20 years from now, what is the demand going to be? All the fancy algorithms and things like that. We need updated data to use for that. Um, so traffic counts, focus groups with stakeholders that, um, you know, know developments that are coming or, you know, Sparrow is a great example. We know there's big developments coming there. We know there's emergency service vehicle needs there. Um, so all of that behind the scenes work and the technical analysis, you know, level of service has all been happening over the course of many, many months this year. And we've just gotten into the public input portion of it. Um, we had a community event in September and that's detailed on michigansavenue.com. Um, but we would anticipate probably a, a couple more chances to provide feedback, more virtual based at this point, because as mentioned before, we're trying to confirm what we've already heard, right. not bring in, you know, we don't want to spend two years getting public Post input. notes on whiteboards. Exactly. And <laughs> we've been there. We've done that. <clears throat> yep. We just want to confirm our direction. Um, when we do finish the study, we are providing um, preliminary design recommendations and kind of the technical analysis, the demands to the city of Lansing for their road construction projects at the end of this year. Just so, as mentioned before, they don't do anything that we can't uh, do to align to the, the longer term vision. Um, but then the actual study will be released um, early next year, probably about March's is timeline. March, and, okay. Yep. And that'll be all on the website. So your public input opportunities are on the website, your FAQs, uh, details about the project, the why. You know, if anybody ever needs some good talking points, someone says, why should I care about Greater Lansing's Michigan Avenue? Go there and it'll tell you why. Got it. And you touched on it, but it, it is pretty spot on, right? It, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a corridor divided, right? Mm -hmm. The city of Lansing people often don't go into campus because it's viewed as campus, right? And then exactly. they, the, 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 they talked about the 127 overpass being like kryptonite, right? The students don't go west of that uh, because they just want to stay right. Nothing they, exists they really past Brandor. It. Exactly, right. Yeah, exactly. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. Right. And so the idea is to try to break that barrier down and make Precisely. it a much more cohesive you know, corridor that just connects all kinds of things. If you, you want to take over the study, it sounds like <laughs> you know exactly the purpose well, of it. It's the well, the purpose, right? But I'm not good enough to 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 get it from why we're trying to do it to getting it done, right? Sure. So is, is it that the corridor was kind of it just kind of evolved in an ad hoc kind of a fashion, and and now it is we're, we're realizing that it's kind of a missed opportunity and needs to be one kind of organism in, yeah. in, in its totality? That's a good point. I, I think a lot of it is about public perception. Um, and over the years, you know, I've been asked like, okay, well, Nicole, tell me what's wrong with the quarter. Isn't it fine as is? But the point is, is that we here behind the scenes, users of the road and economic developers, nonprofits that don't feel it's servicing the community the way it should be. 
Um, we're trying to take a very balanced approach because we recognize that the corridor has to be owned by the community. The community that actually lives there, works there, owns businesses and properties there. Um, so we want to make sure that we are not um, disenfranchising anybody that currently are one of those groups. Um, but we also want to make sure that this is a destination. This is an opportunity, to your point. There is no reason that on any given weekend, someone who doesn't immediately live on the corridor, whether you're in the region or, quite frankly, outside of it, shouldn't want to come downtown to the state capital. It's the state capital, right? right. It's Michigan State University. <clears throat> yep. um, so to be able to bridge that divide, make it cohesive, make it both a destination as well as something that services the people in the immediate area, I think is huge. Um, and we just haven't treated it that way. So when we talk about problems and how it's evolved and whatnot, um, as mentioned before, some studies, you know, there were specific things like, oh, we, we want to see if it's feasible for a BRT. And others were... Bus rapid transit. Correct. Yes. Thank you for the translation. <laughs> you get lost in the acronyms right. and jargon. Yeah. Um, really, vroom, vroom buses, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, so some studies and perspectives have come for a very specific outcome versus comprehensive. And that's why we're looking at it first and foremost from an operations and mobility needs standpoint. But then how, what opportunities does that afford us economically? Um, you know, we've had comments, everything from, you know, blight concerns and trash pickup to the big stuff like fill the potholes, right? Right, right. Um, and we're trying to bridge that divide and, and hopefully voluntold enough of the community, <laughs> uh, whether it's your nonprofit, a local community, one city cannot do this by themselves. Right. Um, we as, you know, MDOT by themselves cannot do it. We need everyone to be both literally financially as well as emotionally invested and to what can they bring to the table to make the vision a reality. Well, we're starting to get up against the clock, but I have two final thoughts that I want to put out there and get your feedback on. One is one of the most cool things that I was reminded of and that was brought to light in the earlier studies that I kind of took part, uh, took part in mm -hmm. is, you know, not so much the, the city of Lansing, city of East Lansing, Lansing Township, whatever, is the, the uh, colloquial name of a region, right? You got the mm -hmm. stadium district, district, you got Old Town, you've got Rio Town. So like the little pods of coolness, right? That, that give it a, a brand almost of sections of this corridor, you know, Lansing's east side, has that it's probably not as robustly used as an old town or rio town stadium district in my opinion is just right below those other two nicknamed mm -hmm. parts of town lansing's east side is maybe one rung a little bit lower of that and then you probably call it downtown lansing or downtown east lansing but i think as we do this there needs to be those and, and like branded literally with i am signs so and glad stuff. that you brought this up <laughs> because that's a, a perfect segue um, so that is actually one of the recommendations from a 2017 study called Shaping the Avenue right. um, to identify cultural districts. And that is probably so far from the right. public feedback Culture we've fit. received so far in both the focus groups with stakeholders um, and asset owners, the, the technical people, as well as the public. There seems to be so far um, a, a very strong support system for those cultural districts, identifying that what the east side needs along Michigan Avenue is not what downtown needs. Right. And what the stadium district needs is not what <clears throat> Frandor needs. Yep. Um, and recognizing that, how can we almost tailor these different districts to service the needs while still, you know, making them, making sure the whole corridor looks like cousins, right? right. Each, each pod, as you said, cultural yep. district, they look like cousins, but they're not twins, right? Yep. So a lot of it, um, you know, from a mobility perspective, we are looking at creative ways about what the needs are along each segment. Um, but that's one of the best points of feedback that we've received so far as we re-brought up that from the 2017 study and said, do you still support this? Do you like this? So to your exact point, you know, that's one of the, a good example of how we're using results from past studies and incorporating it into this study. Right on. And, you know, you got the... Um Frandor was kind of all by itself for yep. a lot of years. Yeah. And then, you know, Skyview came in and now all of a sudden you just got a big dense housing unit for, for students. Now you got Red Cedar across the street and then who the heck knows what Pat Gillespie's going to do with the Sears. But Guess that's good area, as mine. The creativity is going. Right. But 127 to, you know, half a mile, quarter mile mm -hmm. is going to be a massive hub right at Michigan's Ave and 127. You see what I did there? Um, but that's like kind of the crosshairs yep. and probably is geographically almost in the center of the east side of basically um, Hagedorn, you know, to the state capital. Right. So I'm fascinated by this and I think it's great. Final yeah. thought, because I know we're a little bit over. Um, it seems like we need to make sure that the youth have a bigger voice in this. My experience tells me that when you ask for public comment and you get the NIMBYs, the not in my backyard people and the naysayers and stuff. The people that have the time to pay attention to this 
I'll just say it, are the people that are maybe 60 and older. Who make time, right? Right. Yeah. And, and have the time because they've earned the time and are paying attention to it. But in my opinion, their lens is antiquated. And we need to talk to the 10-year-olds to the 25-year-olds and say, what do you want this place to look like? Because in my opinion, we're building it for them. Well, we want to make sure that... I, I, I mean, everyone's seniors and... Because everybody has a voice. Absolutely, everyone has a voice. But with that said, is we are connecting a huge decision-making hub for our entire state with Global Talent at Michigan State University. So we should be looking at it from a talent lens, quite frankly. And we could talk probably talent, for hours on exactly talent. exactly right. But there is an attraction opportunity here, absolutely. Nicole Balmer from Tri-County talking about Michigan's Avenue. What's the website again? Michigan's Michigansavenue.com. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you.